Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Wa Ta'ala 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 Wa and a reminder of Shamsi wa Qamar that throughout Holy Qur'an Allah is giving us the example of moving and a life that moves towards the reality of that which is eternal and that is the light. And that light is the sun for our example in life and it is the symbol of eternity, the only thing that has been here throughout all the ages of our existence on this dunya is that shams, that sun. So that sun is a sign for us that is eternal. And that sun is a fire, nar, a diya. And that fire is the symbol of the fire of Divine Love that is based on fusion, that based on energy coming together and making an eternal clean source of power, not the making of splitting something and creating disaster and waste. So means all these symbolisms Allah has given that I put the signs on the horizon. And those whom are seeking they should find a sign within themselves, at least for those whom are trying to find themselves and look inside for the reality. And all of these are in the rising sun of the west. The book that is out with the rising sun of the west has a deep reality of guidance. And the guidance and the standards of guidance that Allah has set through Holy Qur'an and given that reality to the presence of His Sultan Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa And that becomes the standard for guidance. So that people don't have to customize and change and sort of deviate from what they call His guidance. Allah gives the standard for us that your life is to move towards that sun, to move towards what is eternal, that you are to seek always the eternal light. And this reflection and reality is continuously reflecting for the shaykhs, for the sahabi, for example, the highest of reality is that their whole life was to move towards the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And for Muhammad Mustafa that guidance is to move towards Allah Perfection in Naqshbandiya tal-Aliyyah is right in this secret that if is the exemplar that his whole life is to move towards the light of Allah because that's Atiyullah to Atiyah Rasul. But we're not that, we're not at that reality and Naqshbandiya's uloom and knowledge has the reality of humility and their humility is that they are not from that reality, they exist within the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And Sayyidina Muhammad is the reflection of that eternal light that they are to move directly to. So then become Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum, obey the messenger and those in authority. So means that the holy companions they understood that. They made their life to follow the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He became the sun for them and as a result they were in the training of becoming moons. And their training of moon is that they took their difficulties, they took their testing and they lived and died in the service of Sayyidina Muhammad and was their rising sun, was the eternal light and that reflection of what they wanted to achieve. And as a result Sayyidina Muhammad 
turn them into eternal realities that my companions have made them like stars on a dark night. I added the made them but I, they are like stars on a dark night because this is the star maker. This teaching and this example, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad from all the Prophets of God. So all the Prophets of God are in need of the Muhammadan reality that teaches them the station of annihilation, complete annihilation. And that was the example through Sayyidina Musa that, what I have been given I want higher. Then Allah I'm giving you the understandings when He said, I want to seek where the two rivers meet for only Allah and those who have been trained by them, means that's a clarification that you go to My annihilator and from His nation they will annihilate you, bring you down to nothing and bring you into the presence of that one whom is the Sultan and the king of the here and the hereafter which is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That's what Nabi Musa wanted, I want where the two knowledges meet and the purpose of Sayyidina Khidr from the moons of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad is that annihilate and that was the whole dialogue of, of humiliation and to be brought down, this is a great prophet of the Divine. So that even Sayyidina Isa salam and the secret hidden within Sayyidina Isa, Jesus Christ peace and blessings be upon him said that, I want to be raised. Don't let me to die to meet that reality, I'm asking you raise me from my condition and that's the importance of being raised alive so that I will be brought back in the last days to be from that nation. So that's the sign of, I'm annihilating my servanthood, my title just to be from the annihilation, just to be from the nation of this king, that I'm nothing in the presence of that king. I don't want to meet him with my title asking to raise me and bring me back in the last days to be from his nation and that's the sign of annihilation. It's like a pope saying, I don't want to be pope anymore, but why is that? 600 million people following you, you put your title away. What God has opened for somebody who puts their title away and becomes nothing for the presence of the Divine Kingdom and Divine Reality and that kingdom come and that will be done and Allah will expose and show who's the king, who's the Sultanat of the heavens and what heavens is, is like on earth of fasting, praying, clean, be clean, of reciting Holy Qur'an, all these realities. So then Prophet the sun and his holy companions like the moon and through our life is the same example that we took a shaykh and the shaykh is like a light for us and we're in a school of training to be moons. That we take the difficulties, we take the testings, we learn not to complain, we learn not to continuously bring the dialogue of shaitan that is attacking and what they call the whispering whispers is don't bring it to life to talk about it. You're giving it a life that which whispers to you and the, the sin of its being proximity to you is something that if you battle God rewards you. If you begin to mention it now become a sayyat and a sin against you. Huh? The badness is that he's coming so close, so that's sinful. That why is your character in such a disarray that the devil can come so close to you and whisper to you. The fact that you fight it and you keep silent through it and you don't give it a life and you don't bring the whispering out and you don't begin the fighting, the cursing, the, the doubt and all of these bad characteristics, God grants you a reward. That was a fight, that is what it meant to be struggling in Allah's way. We know all these terms but people don't seem to put it together when Prophet ﷺ described 
that when I leave this physical world, your life is going to be extremely hard, that will be the great jihad. And the holy companions are astonished that we have fought immense battles. You're saying that the battle coming is even harder? And said, of course, without that light and presence of Sayyidina Muhammad of course every battle with demons, devils, bad desire is going to be immensely difficult. But with the light of Prophet shining there about how difficult it's going to be. Now you imagine then when somebody's bad in the presence of the Holy Prophet of Sayyidina Muhammad how bad they must be that with all that light they still remain bad and that was so bad that Allah named Abu Lahab. He's the father of fire because this, this character was so bad that in the presence of that beatific light he still stayed bad. So the extent of the badness but the goodness and the struggle inside. So that is the jihad. I don't know what people were thinking jihad was inside, internal jihad was what? Is that when you go to cover your head, your whisperer is telling you, take it off, you're going to be in danger, right? You don't look very good. Whatever the whisperer wants to whisper, the fact that you fight it, that is your jihad. That is your struggle. If you have nothing to struggle for then what are you going to be rewarded with? That you're just a handsome person and Allah say, oh mashaAllah you, oh you're so, so beautiful I'm going to give you lots of rewards. But the reward of God is the struggle. So that is our struggle. When a difficulty happens to you and every day a waswas was is coming to you, why they do like that? Why this group like this? Why is like the politics like this? Why each one is, is like this? Each one complaining on, on the internet, this like this, this like this, why, why, why? When you remain silent and your internal fight is you know who's saying that, it's shaitan. God doesn't whisper into your heart doubts. The soul doesn't whisper, the angels don't whisper but God gives us a condition and says there's a door, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al-Asbab, Ya Mufatiha Abwaab. I give you a condition and there's a door there for you. There's actually two doors like video games. Every condition Allah has put two doors, loser. You lost the test, winner. So how many times in life we want to go through the losing door? Because you exploded, you angered, you got angry, you, you gave a life to the waswas, you, you, you invoke the anger, you brought all the characteristics out then you keep going through the loser door. And people like that and say, well how come nothing's happening? How come I'm like following the tariqah nothing is growing? Or so you have to be honest to yourself, لَإِنَّ أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُمْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ That أَنْتَ uh, سُبْحَانِكَ That there's nothing but you my Lord and your glory and I'm an oppressor to myself. I'm the one oppressing, I'm the I- I enemy to myself, no one else. And I keep failing my test and I keep seeing to going through the loser door. And as a result, how anything going to open for me? Seclusion not going to open for me, openings and spiritual openings not going to open for me. So it means then you can be doing that for 30, 40 years. And that's why some people look at somebody and say, oh I came tariqah same time as you, now you think you're a big shaykh, you're this, you're that. You could be one day into tariqah if you have the excellence of character, Allah dress you with whatever Allah wants to dress you with. You can be 90 years in tariqah and you've only gone through the loser door because every time you you, you fail the test, you fail the test, you fail the test, then there's no growing. So then this month is teaching us and the purpose that Allah gives to us as shaykh is that that shaykh is like a son for you. 
because he's such a bright moon in the way he follows his shaykh, his shaykh, his shaykh until the prophetic light is reflecting upon him that when you look at him he looks like a sun to you but he's just a very powerful moon, right? So in, in these astronomy things they said this moon burns ten times brighter than other moons. There's a moon on this planet, it's, it's so powerful that it looks on the universe when they're looking like it's a sun. Then they approached it and said, no there's actually a moon on this planet and it's reflecting that reality so strong. So then that's why Allah gives guidance that the ones whom are taking from Prophet because there's only one source, Allah is, is the center and the light of all creation. And it's the Muhammadan Rasulullah that make tawaf around Allah nothing and no one else, otherwise there would be two. The center of every creation is ahad and oneness. And the only thing allowed and the only creation allowed to make the proximity of that tawaf is wahid. No angel, no creation, nothing is in that proximity of qawba qawsini ya wa adana. Is I approached my Lord in two bow lengths or nearer. So imagine that the two bow lengths and that's the tawaf. So the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah is in a continuous circumambulation of that light and that blessing and that emanation and everything else is behind Muhammadun Rasulullah Nobody taking from La ilaha illallah, nobody takes except from Muhammadun Rasulullah That's tawheed, <coughs> complete oneness, not an angel comes before. Not a saint, not a prophet, not a companion, nobody comes into the ocean to receive directly from La ilaha illallah. It only reflects to Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result Muhammadun Rasulullah becomes the son of the entire created universes. And the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt that witness that reality and dress from that reality, they became immense shining stars that reflect that reality out towards all creation. So then this is the blessing that Allah give that the shaykhs, the awliya whom Allah has dressed with that reality that they took their training as a moon, they're continuously bombarded by difficulties and they keep the characteristic of the moon. So on the path of the sun and the moon it's continuously on a path, it does not go right and it does not go left. Its only focus is the sunlight, its only focus is the eternal light. So it means these are all analogies. So we can't keep just saying only focus is Muhammadun Rasulullah because we have a lot of Westerners and new people listening. And the, the whole focus of the moon is to teach us you only focus on the sun, so focus on the eternal light, let that light to dress you. So the purpose of guidance and why Allah needs and says for you that you need a guide. None are guided except whom we have granted guidance, waliun murshidun. And those whom we have granted them guidance of wali and that they are of a saintly nature. Have we, when we don't grant them that, they have not been granted guidance. So means Allah says in Surah Al Kahf, why? Because this is an immense blessing for humanity that to accompany one of these moons that shine like a star and give the student the ability 
to become in the moon training class where if you want to be the moon and you want to take from that example then don't turn yourself on, don't talk from yourself, don't put your own philosophy into anything, learn to remain silent, learn to take difficulties, take the comments, take the whatever people are going to send and as a result Allah with every drop of sabr Allah dresses them with the beautific Nur Mustafa and when we talk to all these other talks but to continuously remind people that what is this jihad, what is this fight and struggle is to remain silent from your waswas, to not get angry, not to explode, not to ever exhibit any try to bringing out of your ego and this is a continuous battle in life. It's never accomplished but that they took a continuous battle of struggling and struggling and struggling and the talks are always a reminder for themselves first, that a reminder from their central command that fight against yourself. Don't claim to be anything, don't show yourself as anything, don't pretend like you're the source of any light, you're merely our reflection. And if you keep annihilating yourself and remaining silent you can reflect that light more beautifically. And that becomes the wisdom of following a guide because I need to follow a light. And if I don't follow a guide what are you following? Your desire? So said in court if you don't have an attorney and only a fool represents themselves because then who's your attorney in court? yourself, well you're the one who got yourself in trouble to be in court. How can you represent your, yourself in a Divine court? So how can you find your realization if you're trying to realize the Divine and you're the biggest enemy? You're bringing your enemy to find God but he has no interest in finding God. So when you are your own guide you're basically saying, I'm, um, I'm hiring my enemy and he's going to teach me how to get to the Divine Presence. Well no, the enemy within is already the one who's destroying everything. He's the one who does not want you to find guidance, wants you to turn off the channel, wants you to cut that discussion and that talk that you're listening to and he's holding that person as ransom that I'm here to destroy you and overtake you. Use your eyes, your ears, your hands, your feet and your wallet all in My way, not in the Divine way. So then that's the reason for guidance people are even, why guide? Why you're not a guide? Everything on the outside is teaching us that the moon doesn't just find its own orbit and one day maybe it will be over here or maybe it will be over there but it continuously follows the path in which to follow the sun, receive the light. As a result we are all living in existence on this earth by that moonlight. I had it decided and if it was a spaceship from an alien force how the heck it has the power of attraction where it attracts the tides for the ocean, where it descends and emanates the light of the sun and when the light is so strong on earth they become lunatics. Right? Lunacy was the full moon light where people would just go out of whack and if it was a ship it would have shipped and went in different direction. But Allah said, these are all My ships, everything is on an exact orbit and it moves by Divine command. It can go not left and not right without Divine decree. Well that's going to become much, much more complicated as these systems and dajjas and deceit enter into the earth. They want to claim that they're the ones commanding. But Allah is the only one whom commands, even commands their words. Whatever they plan, Allah's plan is within that much more powerful, much more greater. So alhamdulillah Allah should dress us and bless us that this difficulties and this path is about the battle inside of us 
to remain of a Divinely nature, angelic nature in which to conquer all these bad characteristics so that Allah can raise us. For if not for those how will we be raised? How will anyone achieve a station in Divinely Presence if not through testing? So alhamdulillah inshaAllah dress us and bless us, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yathifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.